my game here in the past three months. You know, in college, you know, I was a role player. I blocked shots, run the floor, rebound. But, you know, here in the past few months, I've been able to work on my game and uh, been able to tighten up a few things. What are the main things you want to improve by the time the draft approaches? Uh, just my conditioning uh, and uh, my free throws. I've been working drastic, uh, dramatically on those and uh, just taking time. It's all about uh, visualization and relaxation. Are you comfortable with this process? Or do you feel like... Uh, this is kind of where I belong, or do you feel like, man, I may probably should not that you made a mistake, but do you kind of feel like you're kind of a fish out of water here, or are you no, kind of catching up? This is this is something that I've been doing for the, you know, the past eight years. This is something that hasn't changed for me. Uh, I've had a lot of things off the court, you know, kind of dictate the steps and the process yeah. of it. But uh, now that you know, I'm able to get back and I'm able to do the things I need to do, is everything will be fine. It seems like teams are after, I mean, you, your measurements, all the things, can, I mean, tops for all the combine. They're, they're seeking guys like you. You're a rare commodity. I mean, does it, do you kind of sense that the teams are kind of looking at you and saying, hey, if you can keep everything straight off the oh, court? I mean, you I, I can, can. I can tell you this for sure that interviewing, I had uh, over 12 interviews, and, I, and I'm pretty sure about half of the teams that I interviewed, maybe all of them, I don't know, but from what I get, that I have a very strong chance of playing ball at the next level. What are the teams uh, let's see here. The Celtics, the Grizzlies, the Heat, the Clippers, the Lakers, uh, um, the Wizards, uh, the Rockets, uh, a few more. I Was the Sixers in that group? Uh, the Sixers, yes. Philadelphia. Had what them as well. Uh, no. What kind of Blazers? questions do they ask you? No. What huh? kind of questions do they ask you? Um, just, you know, what happened, you know, off the court. I mean, mainly all my questions are, you know, what happened off the court and what am I doing better and what's different now? Because uh, the basketball itself, basketball part takes care of itself. How did you address those questions? Well? Because I mean, you, you knew going into this. That yeah, you definitely. I mean, that. just kept it honest and everything, whatever they answered, I didn't leave any, you know, stone unturned and just made sure I answered everything correctly. Uh, from the time you left the team at Washington, what have you been doing since then to prepare yourself for this um, process? It's uh, it's been a long process. Of, I've uh, I've had a new uh, a lot of education of, around uh, drugs and alcohol. Uh, a lot of things that I've uh, I've been through. Uh, you know, I haven't kept that a secret, and uh, I've just been working on myself with uh, with a team of people uh, uh, that are really close to me and building a structure so that I can have success at the next level. Basketball wise, have you basketball. Been playing in games or have you uh, been no, working I actually, I actually, uh, I've been working out at P3 in Santa Barbara. Uh, with uh, BDA, Philadelphia's my agent, and uh, I just uh, I just got back on the court for the first time, uh, 505 last week since I left Washington. But uh, my workouts and my strength and conditioning have been going perfect. You what are you looking Celtics for from the team? team? You said the Celtics were one of the teams that you had a chance to speak with. Just give us a sense of just what that conversation was like with, with them. Uh, it was a, it was a really good conversation. I, I felt really comfortable with Coach Stevens. Uh, you know, he knew a little bit about my situation, but, uh, you know, I was allowed to talk to him and have the opportunity. It was good. Based on your situation, what are you looking for? You know, teams are trying to find out what you know, what they can get from you, but what are you trying to get from the franchise? I just, uh, you know, just to be a part of a franchise that has a good team structure, that has good team chemistry and a great, you know, great uh, coaching staff is all I'm looking for. That's all I need. But it has to be more than just basketball, though, too. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah, yeah I mean, definitely. It's off the court as well. But I, I have, like I said, I have that structure set up outside of with my team and with my agency uh, to, to have that taken care of. So I don't, I don't, I'm not putting that burden on the team. I'm making sure I do everything I need possible. Well, what did you get from the sense from the Sixers interview? I mean, what some of the things y'all discussed and moving um, for? We just talked about, uh, you know, uh, being a, a young and developed. Uh, uh, Franchise, uh, young and developed, uh, and to have somebody like me uh, would be good. It's just that I have to take care of some of the problems that I have off the court. What do you think that you could bring to the Celtics coming in, not only on the court, but off as well? Uh, uh, on the court, uh, defensive presence. I think, uh, you know, I block shots at a high rate. I think I'm a, a very good defensive player. Uh, I consider myself to be the best in the country. And um, I just I work hard and do everything I have to do and off the court. I'll just take care of the things that I'm working with and uh, just make sure I take care of them. When you were talking to Coach Stevens, what was something that you were really wanting to get across in the interview process? Um, I was just, you know, I was just trying to sell myself that, uh, you know, I'm one of the top uh, defensive players in the country, one of the best players in the country, uh, you know, when I think of it and uh, just trying to, you know, sell myself so I can get it put on the team. What did you get from them, though? Like, what, what were they saying that, that stuck with you, that they were trying to relate to you? 
Um, you know, I mean, ma mainly in all my interviews, including with the Celtics, uh, it's a uh, it's just the same questions about uh, mainly the questions were, you know, how have things changed, what happened, and how can you better better from here on out? Why are we taking a risk on you? And I mean, those have been those have been the main questions I've been asking answering. Uh, did you take anything from a player like Hassan Whiteside, who sort of faced similar issues in college and then went on to no. be a good player? This uh, year? For me, I, you know, I've looked at a, a lot of situations in the league, and uh, mine is mine is different. Mine is unique from what from what I do, and I still have this chance to I have a a, a different perspective of what my situation is from Hassan Whiteside. But I did look at it and I did see that anything is possible. So what do you boil yourself down to? Like where you made these missteps? What do you think it really comes down to? Um, just come bad decision making, uh, you know, bad immaturity. Uh, you know, I didn't have the proper structure that I needed around me, and uh, now that I do, I'm making better decisions. Did you hire a life coach? Did yes. You know, what does he? What does he kind of teach you about? Uh, everything about life, whether it's basketball, whether it's just you know going to the store and picking up some food. Uh, it's a uh, everything is uh, every small thing is critical in life. What have you learned about yourself over the last couple of months? Um, that the person that I was, I've been for the last three and a half years or made out to be, that that's not really me. And I, you know, I kind of got away from it and I kind of got uh, sucked into all the hype and, you know, I didn't live up to it. And it's something that uh, it affected me negatively. negatively. Do you feel like that there's just been a lot of maturity for you in general over these past few months? Definitely, definitely. I've matured a lot. I've, I've had some of the top help in the country. Uh, some being considered number one in the country to help me and just to have the people that I have surrounded me right now is, is a great thing. Are you sick of answering questions like this? No, like, not at all. I mean, like I said, I put myself in this position. So at the end of the day, if I want to be successful and if I want to be, you know, who I want to be at this next level, that's, that's what I have to do. So I don't mind it at all. Everybody knows you're a beast on defense, but I was watching the recent workout video and you feel like a step back jumper. Yeah. did you add that to your um, You know, uh, Another part of it is uh, being in college, uh, I was a role player. At Fresno State, I wasn't really able to maximize my potential just because of what we had, what they had on the coaching staff and, you know, just my work ethic wasn't there. But uh, when I got to the University of Washington, uh, Coach Romar really took an interest in my, you know, my ability to play. And, you know, he seen the things that I could do. So I really worked on them. I spent a lot of time. And during the season, you know, I had spurts of it, you know, uh, but uh, my thing was run the floor, block shots, and rebound, and I, I, I excelled at that. So now in the past three months, I've been working uh, working with uh, my people down at BDA, and we've just, uh, I've just been putting buckets in the basket, man. How much does film study help you in terms of the footwork and the post? Uh, it does a lot. I, I, watch, I watch a lot of film of uh, Hakeem, Shaq, um, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is somebody I model my game after just because of, uh, you know, our size and our ability to play the game of basketball and uh, just breaking down film, uh, offense, defense, and just, you know, making sure I got the right thing so when I get out there and play, you know, I can, uh, I can excel. Robert, you, you seem to be a polished, mature kid. I mean, you don't seem to be, quote, unquote, a knucklehead. Are you kind of surprised at yourself with some of the decisions you make? You seem like you're... you're you seem like you're, you're polished. You, 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 yeah. you know, you're comfortable I, I, with this. I have, a, I have a clear understanding of what's what's going on in my life, uh, and unlike most most people in my situation, I've been able to identify the wrongs, and mm -hmm. I've been able to go through the experiences, and I've been able to learn from them. And and everybody makes mistakes, regardless yeah. of whether they were the mistakes I made or the mistakes I'm going to make in life. We're going to make mistakes, and at the end of the day, um, I'm lear I've learned and I've made my mistakes, but I, I I'm still going. Robert, what do you bring to an NBA team? Uh, I'm a great teammate. I would uh, I bring character. I'm a great guy on the court. Uh, I love my teammates. I love the guys that I play basketball with. Uh, I bring a defensive presence. Like I said, I consider myself to be the best defensive player in the country. Um, so I feel like I can go in immediately and, uh, and be a presence. What's your one weakness you need to improve on? Conditioning. Uh, I've been out for a while, uh, so I'm just getting back to it. Um, but I feel like once I'm at the top of my condition, I'll be unstoppable. At what point did it hit you that for you to have this dream of being an NBA player, you had to make some serious changes? When did you kind of, I guess, hit your rock bottom? Uh, all uh, I hit my rock bottom at Washington uh, when I left. It was a surprise. Uh, it, it wasn't a surprise, but I just didn't think it was going to happen. I thought I was doing so well and, you know, like it was going to keep me around. But it, it's just about uh, I made a lot of bad decisions before that. And, uh, I mean, it's just um, – you know, I hit rock bottom, and I just realized, like, 
you know, I'm 21 years old, I got a family to feed, um, and the food's not gonna put itself on the table. And so I have one more opportunity to accomplish my goals and be able to take care of my family. So I'm gonna sacrifice and do everything I can possible. Which NBA players, if any, have you already spoken to for advice and what kind of stuff have they told you? Um, one person that I, I've talked to a lot is Spencer Halls uh, uh, over the summer. A lot of the Seattle guys, Jamal Crawford, Will Conroy, Brandon Roy, um, Tone Roten, um, Nate Robinson, a lot of those guys kind of took me under the wing and they, uh, they, they let, I played pickup with them and you know they just talked to me about the game and how the game goes and you know how everything is at the next level and I took a lot from that and I think that's why I had a lot of success at Washington at the time and even after you know I had uh, my struggles they still you know they still talk to me and they still uh, they still give me advice. Why should an NBA team 